Hello, welcome to the today class. Today we will talk about inverted index. So these are the today class objectives. We will talk about re-ranking method for achieving higher accuracy. As an example of re-ranking, we will talk about spatial ver uh, verification with uh, this core expansion. And then uh, we will talk about the approximate near, uh, nearest neighbor search. And then uh, uh, basically the image search nothing but uh, performing approximate nearest neighbor search. So to accelerate this image search and this uh, approximate uh, 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 this uh, this approach, we will use the invert index also the the, uh, the invert multi index. Before we move on to the today topic, the last time we talked about the Bagel Visual World uh, model, which is aggregation model uh, from the local uh, uh, features. And the last time we briefly talked about CNN with the triplet loss, which is also known as this uh, re, uh, ranking loss. So last time we talked about the Bagel visual uh, model, but there, uh, uh, basically there's no spatial relationship between this, uh, 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 this uh, visual world. As a result, uh, we actually uh, we somehow uh, lost this kind of information. So there, uh, we wanted to actually maintain the, uh, this kind of information uh, in the uh, middle of the image search uh, process. So uh, I think that I showed this slide before. So given the query, we, uh, uh, we identify the dissimilar images as the short list, right? And then uh, uh, this might be the, our initial result here. Uh, but uh, by performing this kind of the uh, post-processing or re-ranking uh, by using some of, uh, by using this special uh, verification, we will see that actually the, this image has actually the same uh, feature, also their uh, geometric relationship between features very similar to each other here, right? Also, you can see that this image also has the same, uh, very similar feature. Also, their geometry relationship among the features uh, actually has a very similar uh, pattern with this, right? So we hope that we can push the rank, uh, we can actually push forward this image into the uh, 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 upper in the visual list. So the actual user can, ident uh, user can identify the similar image more faster in the, uh, by looking into the visual list from the top to the bottom. That's the main, uh, uh, main uh, benefit of the re-ranking uh, method. So one of the very common uh, post-processing or, or, or also this re-ranking method is that geometric verification, also this core expansion. So uh, as an example of the geometric verification, we commonly using this uh, RANSEC algorithm, random sample consensus technique. So if we, if we just uh, perform just a matching between feature, uh, basically, there we might we might treat that actually these two images actually has a very uh, uh, has a dissimilar object, right? I mean, the basically the uh, we can treat that this feature matching to there, another feature matching to some other random position in that image, right? So basically, the, this may be the true, but the, when you consider geometric relationship between them, we know that they cannot be the same, right? So the, uh, uh, in most of case, if we are using this kind of geometric verification. Uh, which is nothing but looking at the, this geometric relationship between features, uh, uh, then we can achieve the, this the better uh, accuracy. Another uh, technique is, is that this uh, uh, core expansion, which may not is also very simple. Uh, we typically start with the query, right? We, uh, we usually provide a query image, and then we go through the DB, and then we return the this the identify similar image, right? And then we, we treat uh, this result as uh, another, Im another input to the, uh, to the image, uh, image search system. And then we also identify the uh, 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 similar images uh, again. And then by keep doing it, actually, we can identify more, uh, more bigger set of the similar images. Okay, as an example of the geometric verification, we will uh, use this Ramsey approach. Uh, the ranting approach actually uh, is kind of uh, simple. So we start with, uh, uh, from the, these two images, we identify the, these matching, uh, matching pairs. In this case, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this actually feature F is, or F is a match here, another, uh, another feature F in this image, and so on. And then here, uh, out of these uh, many these matching pairs, we randomly choose these four matching pairs. So for example, here actually I, I just uh, uh, I just showed the these three uh, 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 matching pairs. But actually, the, uh, uh, here uh, 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 we choose these four matching pairs, and then we estimate this uh, we estimate the transformation out of these uh, four matching pairs. So we can use the different uh, 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 
different transformation between these two images. If we assume that this, that we can, uh, we can commonly assume that this homography, homography is nothing but just uh, I will talk about it later, later on more. But homography is just a three by three matrix where we have actually have the eight unknowns. So under the eight unknowns, uh, if we have, uh, if we have these four matching pairs, if we consider x and x and y coordinate to two dimensional coordinate in the 2D space, it will give the eight uh, uh, eight equation under the this the uh, homography equation. So then we can actually out of there we can compute the all the these eight uh, uh, eight on, uh, eight unknowns. That's actually we assume that these four matching pairs. If we assume that these are another transformations, then you can also there you can choose the this more uh, less number of pairs or the higher number of pairs. But anyway, uh, under the uh, under the particular this transformation, you actually cho randomly choose four matching uh, under, uh randomly choose some of the matching pairs and estimate this one. And then there could be the other uh, other many of these the uh, the matching uh, other the matching pairs, right? And then you actually check that predictor. Uh, how well this re uh, remaining point actually the, uh, match well under that transformation. If the suppose that here you uh, given here you apply the, the estimated transformation, right? And then that at that point actually very well matched here in another image under that transformation, which will add the in layer, which means that 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 matching pairs are actually the, uh, works very well under that uh, transformation. But if the some of the uh, some of the actually the point. So point in this case f is actually the maps the very uh, 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 maps the, uh, maps to some other location which is very far away from the, the matching pair here. In this case we treat it as in layer. So basically we keep doing that and then we pick a transformation that give us the very good uh, a lot of the in layers uh, uh, under the uh, under the assumption that that transformation actually explains very well between the this uh, geometric relationship between these two images here. That's the uh, ransack techniques. So basically, we randomly actually we use a lot of random samples, and based on that, we try to uh, get this consensus. So uh, here, I used uh, this. Uh, I use. Uh, I assume the particular this uh, uh, particular transformation homography. So this is nothing but a transformation in this case H between two planes. So uh, here, actually, this is actually the uh, uh, homography matrix H. So there, uh, this three by three matrix. But typically, we uh, normalize uh, the basically the sum, summation of the sum of the this the element turn out to be the one. So actually, there could there could be the this the eight eight unknown parameters. So the uh, under the here we can explain the uh, basically this is nothing but you explain the transformation between two planes. So if we uh, so suppose actually we had this kind of wall rectangular shape here, and then if you look at the, this wall in you know, a and that direction that the rectangle looks like the, the this rectangular yellow rectangular shape looks like the, this shape, right? And then we can explain this kind of transformation under the, this kind of homograph matrix. That's why actually we use the, this uh, this one uh, uh, here uh, uh, for the this ransack algorithm. Also, you can uh, you can also, uh, as I mentioned before, you can also assume a much more uh, more complicated transformations. But at that case, you need to actually choose the more number of uh, more number of matching pairs. So based on that, we can uh, we can do the uh, we can do the for example, if we apply the ransack here, you can see that even though there are many matching pairs, uh, you cannot uh, then uh, then you cannot you cannot identify the very good transformation that explains the uh, uh, between two pairs with the many in layers, right? And then you can see that okay, this may not be the matching image. So for example, actually I saw uh, uh, a few years ago I saw the, this uh, uh, movie. And then, uh, 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 actually, uh, uh, in some of the sequence of, uh, in some of the, the scene setting of the movie, actually, they they, they wanted to identify the, this kind of car, but there could be the many uh, many uh, many uh, many cars with the, this uh, same shape, right? But actually, they look at the particular pattern of here, and then they do the matching matching between across the, this, the different this CCTV image, and then they can identify the, they can keep track of the, this particular car with the pattern. By using the, the by uh, by performing this kind of the special uh, matching, the pattern matching through the uh, uh, through this kind of uh, basically the, we can use the the ransack ransack technique over here actually. This is just one application. I mean we can just use this technique for the image search or some other this kind of pattern matching. Uh, also actually there here 
We didn't really use the rent algorithm here, but uh, we can also con uh, there has been actually some of the image search technique by considering this kind of special uh, configuration between this uh, between the these uh, features actually. So uh, here they, uh, uh, <clears throat> they look at the we can we can uh, we can extract a different feature from the face of the cat, and then we look at the particular geometric relationship between these the high or the lows, right? And then uh, also the before I talked about the for matching the between uh, feature, we need to consider some of the, some of these the some of these uh, uh, distance function. In that case, we can use the L1 uh, L1 metric or L2 metric, right? But also the, we can consider we can somehow consider this special special information, and then design a kind of uh, design a new uh, new uh, new distance metric. So actually, the, I didn't really talk about the, the details about here. But actually, they came up, came up with uh, this, uh, some sort of distance function known as the similarity measure, considering the spatial information. So, if you're interested, you can look at the, uh, this paper. But also, the, some of the recent techniques actually the, they do the, they wanted to approach the, this similar problem with the deep learning. So uh, here, given this the, uh, given two images, we actually identify the, uh, this uh, many this local feature. We can use the this if. And then out of these there are many uh, uh, many these the local features, we wanted to look at we wanted to identify the how many actually matching pairs under the uh, particular actually transformation, right? One can use the, this RANSEC, but this paper, some of this recent paper actually say that if you are in the RANSEC algorithm, there could be the many the uh, mismatching uh, points. Here actually green is the under the this correct matching, and then the red one is actually the incorrect matching. But actually, they to address the to design a better technique than the RANSEC, they actually uh, they uh, proposed the this deep learning based approach. And uh, their main idea is that they further further this the, for each uh, uh, for each pair of uh, uh, for this the, each this uh, descriptor, they return a probability of being in liar for each feature actually. So uh, I I'm not going to talk about all the low level details, but also they adopt some of the classification technique. And then they say that uh, they actually the computing this kind of probability of being in liar as uh, 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 based on this some sort of this classification approach. So basically here the, we can treat that some of the this pair of the uh, pair of the, the feature could be the in line or not, right? Some sort of the binary uh, approach, but actually the, they also the compute the actually probability. Uh, uh, by doing that uh, by doing their approach, they also consider relative motion between these two motion. Uh, uh, between these two images, also they consider their relative motion uh, for the, this kind of particular loss function that that actually they use for the, their deep learning approach. So, uh, so basically, the, my high level method is that there are actually the, a lot of the, uh, uh, a lot of techniques related to the, this the, uh, performing the correct matching. So uh, basically, you can look at if you are interested, you can looking for the, some of the some of the papers along this line, and then you can adopt this technique for improving the accuracy of the deep learning, uh, uh, accuracy of the, this image search. Also, so far I talked about the, the spatial verifications, uh, but another one is that this query expansion, which may not be also very simple. Uh, this actual original query image, right? And then, uh, uh, and then uh, starting from the, this query image, you look, uh, you identify the, the similar image. Here, actually, these are actually top four images, right? Then you can see that somehow in this case they they uh, they successfully they successfully identified the same scene of the uh, same model, but actually they had a kind of different shapes or the some of the they also had this another this appearance or something like that. And then basically the, by utilizing this kind of the top four images, we also do the we also do the search again, and then we hope that actually we can identify the more of uh, uh, more set of images with the uh, with the more diverse set of the this backgrounds. Or the different shapes. So basically, this top four image has uh, some of the information that uh, some of the information that the original query may not have, right? And then based on that original information, we can also the, uh, identify the more wider set of the, the results, right? But obviously, uh, the one limit, one uh, one potential issue of the, this query expansion is that if you identify the incorrect image in this kind of top four image. Then uh, obviously the identify image from that uh, incorrect image uh, could be the very, uh, uh, could be also the uh, uh, incorrect image, right? So then uh, in, 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 uh, uh, basically you may actually propagate incorrect information further, right? So uh, they actually the 
to avoid that kind of problem, typically in the uh, in the uh, for the core expansion, uh, out of this uh, out of this, uh, uh, for example, if they identify the top four images, they somehow uh, they actually aggregate these four images together, and they use that aggregate image, hoping that it, it maintains a lot of the uh, correct information, and then uh, from that uh, 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 from the, the aggregate image, they identify the follow-on images. That's the one of the main idea of, of the core expansion. And also, so some of recent techniques they act, uh, they actually take uh, one more step along that line. Uh, this actually the, this actually the, has the name of efficient diffusion on the region manifold. It looks like it's very uh, different from the core expansion, but actually the, uh, in a way it's, it's a very similar idea. So basically, the, this kind of technique is that you want to identify a related image by the diffusion process. Basically, diffusion process is like the you know that is the there's certain energy and the that energy actually uh, the, the energy pro uh, the energy propagate uh, through the certain uh, medium, right? And then uh, uh, for the case of heat, actually the that propagation uh, process can be uh, can be described by the this, some of this uh, diffusion process. But here the different uh, diffusion process can be explained by the this random walk. You can treat the random walk of the this molecular level something like that in the science. But actually, the base, basically, the based on that kind of the approach, we treat that uh, we actually the treat the random walk. We perform random walk based on the dissimilarity between our pair of images. So main idea is that uh, uh, suppose that this actually query image, and then you actually identify the this the, uh, nearby similar image, right? So in other words, you basically you identify this top four image. Basically, top four is the kind of similar image to the query, right? You identify. And then based on that, you can keep identifying this uh, 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 similar image, right? And then the, the main difference between this the diffusion process and here is that I think that uh, basically the, they look at the, uh, here, uh, we identify the, this, uh, this core image and we identify the another image, right? And then if we identify the another image, but actually the, in this process, actually they look at the, all the relations between the here to there or here to there, actually. But on the other hand, in the core expansion, when you uh, when uh, when you identify the uh, when you identify the this the, uh, image here, we we we'll look at the relation uh, relation relation uh, from the core image and this one, and then we we'll look at the relationship from here to there, right? We don't look at the relation relationship between here to there, right? That's the main relation, the main difference between this core expansion and this the, uh, this kind of approach. So basically, the, they look at the uh, various relationship between, among the a lot of the similar images, right? So that's why they utilize the, this k nearest neighbor uh, uh, images of the core image. They look at the uh, they look at the, their relationship and then and then uh, and then hoping that actually the uh, hoping that uh, uh, suppose actually uh, there are a lot of the images here. Actually, this dot could be the, the image, right? And then if you are just using the just simple the Euclidean distance, then this image may be the also located very uh, very close to the uh, very. Uh, so for that this image also located very close to the uh, here, the core image, right? But uh, you can see that uh, this image is located there, or this kind of the, this, this set of image located there, and another set of image located there. Then the, you can see that there are some of the this gap between them, right? And then you might see that actually there maybe there, uh, uh, basically this uh, this set of image has uh, some of the different structure over the, this set of image, right? So we're hoping that we can actually identify the similar image only on, on this shape. So basically, this is actually known as the kind of this uh, manifold. So by using the, this kind of the, uh, 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 by using the, this the k years neighbor image, basically the similar image, by looking at the, their relationship together, and then we're hoping that we can identify image all, all, only under this manifold. By uh, 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 and then we can actually even order this image, uh, which could be in the uh, different manifold. So if you're interested, actually, I recommend you to look at the, some of the uh, related paper along this line. But at any high level, they actually look at the, this, the relationship between the similar image and they utilize the kind of information. Okay, so far I talked about the, the spatial verification, also the uh, uh, this core expansion. So now I'd like to talk about the inverse file, also the index for the uh, index, uh, uh, index approach for the efficient search. So whatever you do, actually, you need to identify the, the similar image uh, in a very efficient way, right? So uh, this actually typical system of the, this recent very efficient image uh, image search uh, image uh, image search system. So uh, in a lot of cases we using this inverted file. Inverted file is actually assuming that we 
we already partitioned their, uh, this their set of their, this image database into a set of cluster. So basically, uh, 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 from the uh, image DB, and then you extract a lot of features, and then you partition their, you, you maybe run the, this k-means clustering, and then you partition their, their, this kind of feature into different clusters. You can uh, say that these features and they're, they're close to the C1, CT, and, and, and so on. You can treat that this cluster of the corresponding to the this visual world that we talked about the background visual world uh, model. And then, uh, suppose that, uh, suppose actually, there, given the query, you also extract the feature, and then you check the, uh, whether that, uh, in what cluster that feature actually located to. Suppose that the query image, some of the feature of the query image actually located within this cluster, right? And then we want to know if we know the images that are actually have the feature that are under this uh, that are under uh, this the cluster. Then we can we can we can treat that the image uh, associated with the, this cluster has a high probability to be uh, uh, more similar to that core image, right? So as a uh, uh, as a result to answer that to realize that idea, we want to identify we want to identify the, the uh, a set of image that actually has a feature on that cluster. Uh, as a result, we, uh, uh, under the, this kind of the, under the, this, the, this cluster, we identify the, we list the, this, the, a set of the image that actually has the, the uh, put, uh, that has the feature under that, under the, that, that cluster. That's why that's inverted index. Inver we call it an inverted index or inverted file, actually. And then suppose that this query image, uh, we we identify this core image actually has a feature under the L2 and LK, uh, the C2 and CK, and then we actually go through the this inverted uh, file in depth, and then we actually look at the we, we identify the this uh, uh, those images, and then we perform the only the matching between the core image and uh, against the, uh, against that uh, against uh, against those images, and then we can then we don't need to uh, we don't need to the scan all the images, right? Instead, we, we just need to the, go over the image associated with only the uh, C2 and CK. That way, we can accelerate the uh, search system, uh, search performance. And then, based on that, we, do the, we identify the, the short list. Uh, and then, we, do, we also do, we can do the real ranking uh, by using the, the special uh, verification, also core expansion, to improve the, this accuracy. And then, we return the only top, top, uh, uh, let's say, top R element to the user, actually. That's the kind of the, uh, the common uh, of the recent uh, very efficient image search system. So basically, the, this inverted file is one of very common uh, module of that system. Okay, so I will talk about the inverted file, inverted index, but the, here, uh, uh, let me, the, uh, let me the summarize again. At the construction time, we, build the, we need to build this the, uh, cluster, right? In other words, the code book, right? We can use, we can use the, the k-means cluster that I talked about before, right? And then, uh, based on that, we build the inverted index, inverted file. Uh, basically, we actually associate the, each descriptor to the disclosed word. Uh, and then, and then we store, we store, uh, and then we store the, this the, uh, uh, descriptor ID or the image ID uh, uh, associated with the, this, each uh, each individual word. Here, I mentioned that this quantize, but actually, the, we will get back to that issue later on. And then, uh, basically, the uh, if we do that, given this uh, given this cluster, visual world, we can identify the this uh, what are the actually the feature and image associated with that uh, the cluster uh, uh, associated with that of of uh, of visual world. At the query time, uh, given the query image, we identify the the first uh, there could be the main, uh, uh, there could be the some features, right? And then we identify the this top k closest word. Uh, uh, let's look at it here. This a, let's treat that this query image, and then we identify the one actually k closest uh, the digital world. I mean, we can only look at the only the one one. Uh, we can look at the uh, top closest uh, visual world, but actually, the, due to the, this quantizing effect, uh, you can see that actually the, uh, these images, uh, these features uh, are actually very close to there. But if they close center, actually, all the way far away from uh, from the query image. Then, uh, then we, we cannot consider this feature and image, right? So that's why we look at the, this k closest instead of the only top one. In this case, we identify the, this uh, three uh, visual world, and then we retrieve all the data, all the images uh, associated with the, this the, uh, inverted index. And then we do the, the uh, a more in-depth matching between core image and then other images associated with this the, uh, top k uh, closest uh, visual world. 
So in this case, if we wanted to actually, if we are using the uh, more number of the visual, uh, if we uh, if we consider if we could, if we consider more number of visual words, then obviously the, we can we can actually the, we can reduce down the, this quantization artifact that we talked about before. Also, but there actually one issue is that it, it takes more time to find to perform the, this k uh, this the k nearest neighbor uh, this the, uh, it, it, uh, it takes more time to identify the, this kind of the uh, uh, this uh, 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 flow, this, this visual world. Again, as I mentioned before, each this cluster mapping to the kind of visual world. So, <coughs> I mentioned that here, uh, given, the, uh, given the query, we need to identify that this uh, top K closest visual world, right? There is nothing but, uh, 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 there is nothing but nearest neighbor search. But the performing exactly the nearest neighbor search is the, takes a lot of time. So usually we, took, we perform this approximate approach, approximate nearest neighbor search, also, uh, also known as ANN search. So if we are using the if we are using the large number of k, say uh, I wanted to identify the this the ten closest the visual world something like that, then it takes more time to find the cluster given the query. Uh, but actually the, we can use the, actually the, the ANN technique to accelerate this process. There could be the many different ANN techniques. One is that some of all the techniques actually you, uh, using the KD tree is a hierarchical approach for the low dimensional problem. But our case is our descriptor has a very high dimension, maybe 1,000, 2,000, and more than that. So typically the tree-based approach doesn't work very well. That's why we typically use the uh, hashing or quantization technique. So for hashing, we are using the, the hashing-based technique for accelerate the high dimensional uh, tech high, uh, uh, for the this A and then with the this, uh, 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 with the, the high dimensional feature uh, 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 the high dimensional feature. Also, the by using hashing, we can also the, uh, we can compactly represent uh, compactly represent the, this uh, descriptor. So it has a lot of benefits. So we will talk about this hashing. Also, I will talk about some of the uh, some of these quantization techniques here. So this actually the example of the KV3. KV3 nothing but is that uh, here actually these two illustrations data points, and then uh, we build the we uh, for every partition we build the this data into the two 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 sets. Here actually we partition data into the, this x of uh, uh, this x dimension, and then we also the partition the, this data along the this uh, this dimension for this node, right? Based on that we can build the we can actually build the some sort of hierarchy, and then given a query, so for that your query located there, and then we traverse uh, this hierarchy from the top to bottom. We actually then we identify the what are the actually the region that corresponding to the uh, the query, and then we know that actually in that region also there are some other also uh, there are other associated data, right? Based on that, we can do the this kind of the uh, we can do the this kind of this AN search, but uh, it's not really useful for high dimension cases that we are working on it right now. Uh, uh, here, uh, so for that, given this image, we could we also can have the multiple uh, local descriptors, right? For this one, we can identify the some of the top k, uh, the uh, top k visual word for other visual, uh, for other uh, feature. We do the same thing, right? Then we actually touch on a lot of the this the, a lot of this the, uh, cluster, right? So we wanted to look at the, this a lot of these local features uh, for uh, achieving the better accuracy, right? But there also there we want to use the, this a lot. Uh, we want to identify the, this more number of the this the, uh, closest visual world. Also, we want to use the, a lot of this. Uh, 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 we want to use the many many this the, uh, uh, cluster to lower down the this quantization effect, right? But as we consider more number of the this the, uh, clusters uh, for building the code book, also the, for identifying the this the, uh, nearest neighbor image, uh, also the, uh, also this nearest neighbor the visual world. It takes a lot of time, so but the, uh, our uh, main the, uh, another requirement for the image search is that we want to spend as little uh, as little time as possible for the uh, this process, right? So uh, you can see that there are some of the, the, these conflicts, right? So that's why we need to think about some other approach, and then one of the recent technique is that uh, uh, is that actually inverse multi index, which is the actually the improvement over the common this inverse index. It actually the, uh, it used actually the idea of the product quantization for index. Uh, product quantization is like this. Given this, the, uh, here actually I give the two illustration. Here for building the cluster, we can using the, the uh, we can using the this k-min clustering, right? But product quantization is it's like this. 
instead of doing the this clustering in the 2D directly, we do the, the we do the uh, clustering of, of all the quantization in the, the soft dimension. In other words, here we do the actually clustering or quantization in uh, basically the, you can treat the clustering or the quantization as the same thing. In the one dimension, we do the, this kind of quantization and this kind of the uh, this kind of this uh, clustering, and then we do the we actually do the separate quantization on uh, all the other one D dimension space here actually the y uh, y space. Yeah, something like this. This actually separate clustering or separate quantization. And then based on this one, we can actually the, we can treat the by using the this two D two different clustering uh, along the x and y. We can we can think about it this kind of the more two D. We can think about this kind of two D partitioning, right, onto the space. And uh, basically the this uh, this uh, basically this is the main idea of the, this product quantization. We do the uh, quantization on the subspace. And then we combine we combine them. That's why it has the idea of the product. The main advantage is that compared to the given the same k, uh, compared to the k means clustering, it can actually give us the much uh, finer uh, the subdivision. Here actually the uh, here so far that we only used the 20, 20 uh, say here actually 20 uh, uh, let's say just the 20 cluster or 20 cluster, right? We just using the we just computed 40. But here, on the 2D space, we got the, actually the, a lot of cluster uh, of the, this 20 by 20, right? Uh, so basically, if you're just using the 40, 40 if, you're just, if you're just using the 40, uh, computer 40 cluster out of the k means in the 2D, and obviously the, the, uh, that cluster will be the much bigger than this one, right? In that sense, actually, we are, by using the, this product quantization, we can get a much, uh, much finer subdivision, given the same k. And then it, it turns out it actually very we can very efficiently identify the this the uh, this the associate this the uh, data given the this the given the code book. So uh, again, product quantization is that split the this high dimension back into the some of the sub uh, some of the this the subspaces. Here actually the suppose that uh, you actually have uh, this kind of the, the feature, then you subdivide into the four by four something like that. And then you do the, this. Uh, uh, you build the separate code book for each chunk. Uh, in other words, you build the code book along the this this space or the this space, something like that. That's the main idea. And then what's the benefit uh, that product quantization can give us over the simple quantization, such as in k in clustering? So suppose that you actually you can you can spend uh, about the four bytes, for, uh, uh, four bytes for each descriptor. Then out of four bytes, if we can actually if you're using the this the single code book. Then they, uh, uh, out of this, uh, out of four bytes, we can actually build the one billion code book, which is a lot, right? But if you are running the, actually the k min clustering with the one million, one million, one million, one billion k, it takes a huge amount of time. Also, the maintaining this one billion code book require the, a big, a lot of the, this memory space. So uh, basically, it's impractical. But if you are doing the product quantization and then we build the four different code book, basically for uh, out of the uh, uh, basically the out of the four bytes, we just using only one byte for the one code book, another one byte uh, for the another this code book for the this different subspaces. Then we can actually have uh, this the, for each code book we only have uh, eight bytes, and then uh, out of that we can we can encode the, this two hundred fifty six code book, right? Then uh, uh, basically the, we actually have uh, the four different code books with and. Where the, each of the code book has only 256, then just the running, just computing this uh, small number code book can be done quite quickly. Also, the storing the code book, small number code book, it can be done quite uh, in a, it can be done uh, in a quite effectively even in terms of memory or performance. That's the main benefit of the using product quantization. And then, uh, then you can see that actually we think about these two, uh, two, uh, two different code book, right? The one dimension in this 2D case is the one code, one D code book, another one D code book, right? So that's why based on this 2D, we can think about it, there could be the multi index, right? Along the this code book, we can think about it another uh, another index. Uh, for along the this code uh, code uh, code, we can think about it another index, right? That's why it actually has the uh, its name of the multi multi index, and and then based on that, we can think about it actually the uh, how we can identify the associate the this descriptor. In, uh, 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 associate this uh, image or, or descriptor all, along the this code book uh, code and along the that that code. 
and then uh, basically the uh, by compared to index, uh, just common index, multi-index actually showing the uh, given the gives the same number of the uh, some same number of same number of actually the uh, the memory, you know, achieve the much better actually the uh, uh, accuracy. I didn't really talk about the recall the measure here, but you can just treat that this actually accuracy. So given the uh, given the same number of the memory, you can achieve much better accuracy. Also, there it, it turns out it actually the much also the reasonably faster than the uh, the uh, index. Obviously, by considering multi index, it, uh, the the running performance will be the already slow. But compared to the index, actually they already the it actually is slow a little bit, but it gives us multi index gives us much better accuracy. That's the main benefit of the using multi index. It's the main idea here. So there there could be there some very complicated wording here. But main idea is that by comparing the here, this result achieved by the exact nearest neighbor server, it's not an even approximate, it's the exact one by scanning all the data with uncom uncompressed data, but by using the multi-index, but here in each uh, even the this each descriptor actually quantized into the 16 byte. If you are using the uncompressed uh, uh, uncompressed this gist descriptor, you might require maybe there's uh, uh, a few thousand, uh, a few thousand bytes, a few kilobytes, right? So it gives us the much better uh, the performance, also the uh, uh, memory, the saving. So you can see that each uh, accuracy is very similar to the, the, the using the exact one, also the that used the even original uncompressed data. So this one using the multi index, uh, I didn't really talk about how we can actually compress the this the. Uh, a descriptor, but we can use the. I will talk about that approach uh, later on. We can also using the default quantization to compress down the this uh, compress down the uh, descriptor. The basically the by using the, that kind of approach, we can do the uh, searching very fast with a much lower number of the uh, memory requirement. That's the main message out of here. Okay, so I talked about the different approach. I talked about the uh, inverse index, also some of the recent technique multi. Uh, inverse multi index. So basically, the uh, uh, we 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 definitely used that kind of approach for handling the billions of images. So for improve the research, uh, improve the researching speed, we using the, this inverse index. So that actually we only identify, we only scan uh, instead of the going over all the images stored in the DB, we only look at the related the image uh, related image in terms of this code book, and then we uh, we can achieve the high accuracy by using the large code book. Also using the spatial verification and core expansion and so on. Also, uh, we wanted to reduce down the, this memory requirement, and then basically the, to do the search in the end, we need to do the this matching between these. The, uh, at some point, we need to do the, this the measuring the uh, uh, distance between two uh, two feature, right? So definitely for that for performing that process, we need to have uh, this kind of the information about the uh, information. We need to get the information of the this feature, right? But some of the GIST or the CIF or CNN feature very high dimension and require a few kilobytes. So we definitely need to reduce down that uh, encoding that descriptor. So we need to some sort of compress or the compact representation. That's why I talk about the actual hashing technique, which will be come later on. So today, with, I read, by now, I wish that you can understand the, the main idea of the real ranking for achieving high accuracy based on the spatial verification of the core expansion. And then also there I talked about the approximate nearest neighbor search by using the inverted index, also the, the recent this inverted multi-index. So the main, re main reason is that we don't actually, the, we, uh, we don't actually, the, uh, we scan all the data. So actually we, uh, we, uh, we actually, the, we only the scan only portions of the, the, uh, the database. That's why we can also improve the, uh, the we, we improve the performance. But actually, there, there's a, the, by doing that, we're losing some of the accuracy a little bit. Since we didn't, we didn't go over the older, uh, we didn't go over the uh, older data in the DB. So that's why it is actually approximate approach. So there, we, we talked about the actual approximate the neighbor, uh, neighbor search to accelerate uh, this image search algorithm and some of the components of the image search. And next time, I'll talk about hashing technique. And this is actually the, the common homework for every week. Uh, the, uh, also, the, uh, you need to also, the, I didn't really talk about here, you, uh, every, uh, before the, every Tuesday, the class, you need to actually, the, you need to submit the, this, the, uh, this, you need to browse the summer paper and the submit the, uh, uh, summary of those papers before the, uh, before the midterm exam time. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Bye.